Hey guys, what's up? It's True Voodoo. Today I'm going to be talking about how to play the IS-7, and this is going to be an extension of the video I made called How to Win Brawls, The Art of Brawling. So we're going to talk about all the things that you need to be doing to be a better IS-7 player, and this does apply to a lot of other tanks as well, not just the IS-7, but I'm choosing the IS-7 because I think that this is the best tier 10 heavy in the game for a new player. Whenever someone asks me what tank I recommend for their first tier 10, and they're new to the game and they want to go down a line, I say IS-7. So I'm going to show you why it's the best for a beginner. And if you're a veteran of World of Tanks, feel free to stick around and see if you can pick anything up anyways. If you're here for the scav hunt for the NA server, the code is in the description. And I will have a link to Klaus Kellerman's channel. He will have the code for tomorrow. So the reason I say that the IS-7 is the best tier 10 for a beginner is because you don't have to worry about your cupolas or your turret roof. When you get in good cover, people just aren't going to be able to kill you. And on the flip side, you're going to struggle to kill them because the gun on this thing is not great and you do need to shoot a lot of premium. So the IS-7 is characterized by a great turret and then a pike front. So the armor meets in the middle and then slopes away. If you're in the middle of the open, you can consider your low plate a weak spot, but your upper pike armor is actually still pretty strong. It's when you begin to turn left and right that the pike armor begins to become weak. And this is an issue because this is what happens when you side scrape. So when you side scrape, people can hit the way far back corner of your armor on the front on whatever pike is flat to them. And that becomes a pretty good weak spot. It's going to be this top little corner right here of the pike when you're in a side scrape, and we'll show that in the video. So we're going to jump right into the bread and butter of the IS-7, and that is getting into a really good hold down. So what I want to do here is show you how to tell when you're in a really strong position. So I want you to watch this right here. Watch what happens. Watch. Did you miss that? So here it is again. As I'm driving around, I tend to zoom in at where I think enemies are positioned, and that's how I determine if I'm in cover or not. So when I zoom in, this is what I'm kind of seeing in my head. So the red line is where I more or less think the enemy's barrel is going to be or how high their gun is in that bush. And then the green line is the hill that I'm behind. In the orange, the orange arrows just show that there's, there's a pretty good gap there. And so as I'm driving in and I see that, I immediately start to back out. So that was a cover check. So this is a much better position for the IS-7. He fires and then I start putting the hill really close to my reticle. And you can see it's really a slim margin right there. This is what is so good about the IS-7 because if I'm in a position like this, I can take all day to aim my shots. And this is what he sees. He has absolutely no chance to pin me like this. This is why I say it's such a great beginner tank. And this is personally why I like to play it because I can just kind of abuse this. And the only people that are gonna get me are Artie and like 183s with Hesh. This is an example of bad positioning for an IS-7. So you can see me do my cover check here. And then the gap between my reticle and the hill is much bigger. And so he's able to hit me. And this is what it looks like from his perspective. You can see the pike armor that's facing him. It's flat. And that's what I showed you at the start. But look at this. I turn towards him. And now all of a sudden, even though I'm out of my perfect hole down and I'm showing some of my whole armor, he's not going to be able to pen me. So the IS-7 does become more difficult to play in a city when you can't get a perfect hole down. This is an example where you can see there's a big gap in the rocks and he will be able to shoot me there at this angle because my pike on that side is flat to him. So two things you can do. One is this. I'm kind of using a third person reference and I'm trying to show him a little bit of that weak spot and see if he'll shoot at it. But the next one would be just to turn and face him because in an IS-7, if you're straight onto your enemy and your low plate is hidden, even if they can see some of your pike armor, they're not going to be able to hit it straight on because then it has the best angle possible. So this next thing is going to be the most important thing I think in an IS-7 because you can't always be in a hold down. So you're going to have to be able to side scrape from cover and then show a little bit of your front pike where that weak spot is and then try to reference where that's at using third person perspective and then try to make them miss. So for me, there's not a really hard science to this. It's visually, you can't be perfect. Sometimes you'll mess up. Sometimes you'll get hit when you think you're not actually showing them anything. You can use trial and error to improve the skill. So for me, with IS-7, I've played it a lot. I kind of know that where the turret meets the whole armor up there on the left at the tip of the orange triangle is kind of where that weak spot begins. And then the red line is just showing his gun. So I need to try to 
tease with the gap between those spots. Right now it's really big because I'm too far out. And now I'm going to start playing with that and then trying to give him a little bit to shoot. But I want to make it hard for him. The, the trick to this is when you're trying to engage someone, you have to give them something to shoot. You can't just sit there and then say, hey, here's my side armor. They're not going to shoot it. You have to give them something. But like I said in my last video, it has to be low percentage. But it's something and they'll take a risk. And if they hit it, that's fine. If they hit it, you can just come out and then you get a shot on them. You get your attempt. But at least the thing that you gave them was something that maybe they would miss. You never know. There's a bounce. And then I can come out and I get a free shot and I go right back in. So on my screen, we saw I'm using the third person. And I just kind of found that sweet spot and then I just kind of play with it. And if he hits me, it's not a big deal. Because then I come out and it's my turn. But at least I'm not just making it easy for him. Now it's my turn. I get to shoot. And then this is probably the last case scenario for an IS-7. If you get caught out and you're in the open for someone, just face hug them. This is like the face hug of death. It's so hard for them to beat it. You can kind of watch if he's aiming to the left side. I would want to turn left a little bit and then it will make that side harder to hit. But that's about it in a face hug. This is just a weird scenario that you won't see very often, but sometimes you get in a really crappy position and you have to try to make someone miss. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get him to shoot at my low plate. The rubble is hiding a little bit of my pike. And so I'm just trying to make the low plate really steep. So he hits me, so I just adjust. So you can see from his perspective. So he can shoot my pike, but most people will kind of go for the low plate in this situation, just because the low plate is usually tempting. So the first shot pins, so then I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I need to adjust that. Second shot, he got unlucky and it hits the pike, like the tip of the pike. Third shot, I'm pretty steep and that bounces. So, so the point is, don't give them something easy. You know, make it a challenge and if they hit you, it's not the end of the world, but at least you gave them something kind of difficult and then it's your turn, then you would engage. All right, so let's have some fun now. So we're gonna watch this, but we're gonna play with a different perspective. So I'm driving in, I'm doing a little zoom in, not to shoot, I just wanna see the terrain. And I'm not in cover yet, I just keep driving. And I'm gonna go for this bush over here because I know it's really good position. I'm cover checking right there, seeing how low I am in the divot. I'm not actually trying to aim or shoot at anyone. I pull up to my spot, see the mouse get lit, cover check, he's a little high. So I back down, cover check, and I back down even more. I don't feel comfy there. So now I'm readjusting, I'm gonna recheck here. I'm a little high again, I didn't feel good. And so you don't take the shot, right? The trick with the IS-7 is don't get impatient. And if the cover check is not good, then just reposition. It's not the end of the world. What's, what's important is that you don't get shot. Because if one of those guys shot me, I, I most likely would have been able to return fire because they're in cover. So here's a cover check, now we're feeling pretty good. I come up a little bit high but we're fine. So here I'm like, okay, where's the grill at? I look at the bush. I know he has a long reload. And I'm gonna take one more shot on the mouse. I'm gonna cover check and I'm like, eh, okay. Cover check and the bush is kind of high and I didn't spot the grill. Now we're in cover. So now I stop. I know I'm in cover from that last check and I come up and I reevaluate. And I shoot the dirt 10 feet away from my gun perfect is7 rng that was a really slim shot on the grill but now we're working i'm in good cover you guys saw how i made my approach you saw how i checked this is the miserable part of the is7 but what's important is that i'm safe and i'm protecting my health and then i just have all day to aim as long as they can't hit me so here's another situation and right now i'm not in any kind of hold down i would just be using a rock as cover and doing those tricks i showed on the poke I get shot from the island by a TVP, so I just point straight at him to kind of minimize that pike flat spot a little bit. He has hit my low plate. And I decide to sweep into this hole down over here because I love this position. So as I'm driving in, I'm zooming in not to shoot at them. I'm just cover checking. Cover check the batch at an easy shot, so we're going to take that. And then we're just zoomed in as we're playing constantly. Zoom in, zoom out. I'm just looking and getting reference for my position. And I see the E50 come up and I'm thinking, okay, he's pretty high on me. And this is kind of what gets tricky about playing cover in a tank like this is the E50 can drive forward faster than I can reverse. 
So I can I can kind of feel that out now and say, okay, I don't really want to go up that far next time. I'm going to kind of play here. This is the sweet spot because he doesn't want to chase this far because then I'm the one who can drive forwards and get a hit on him as he tries reverse. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching the video. Good luck on your IS-7 gameplay. And if you just picked up things that you can use for other tanks as well, because really this is kind of universal, but we focus on IS-7 because we don't have to talk about the turret roof. It's awesome, nice and easy for a video. But good luck on your battles. I really hope that you can use something that you saw in this video and just go out there and own somebody. That's the best thing. As always, don't forget to subscribe. It means a lot to me. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought of the video, and I will catch you guys on the next one.